cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, I've been getting great feedback on my Q&A videos recently, and I want to carry you into the work week by answering a few messages that I have received. My Q&A videos include a few questions from different points in the story, so be aware that the following will have spoilers up through the last book and the last season. Okay, first question. Do you think the Faceless Men stole the Death of Dragons book in order to keep someone else from reading it? Well, to start off, the Death of Dragons book is a soul-surviving ancient tome that is locked away somewhere in the Citadel in Old Town. The top-ranked maesters, called Archmaesters, each have a master key that unlocks every door in the Citadel. One of these keys was stolen and given to an alchemist who had the appearance that we see Jack and Hagar have after swapping faces. Anyway, a very popular theory is that Jack and wanted that key so he could gain access to this ancient book. It is referred to as Blood and Fire or the Death of Dragons because it is believed that the blood-soaked tome has knowledge about dragons that can aid in killing them or even hatching them, which is very dangerous knowledge to have since harnessing the power of a dragon makes a person nearly untouchable. Maesters seem to have a unified belief in keeping magic out of the world and instead rule with science and logic. The Faceless Men, if they did indeed steal or plan to steal the book, it is most likely to keep that knowledge for themselves. One idea is that the dragon egg Euron claimed to have in the books was given to the Faceless Men in exchange for killing his brother Balon. I know, if I lost you there, it is because you haven't read the books and know that the Ghost of High Heart, another book character, gives a prophetic message about Balon's death, linking it to no one. If the servants at the House of Black and White get the book, then the sky's the limit for what they might do. I would bet the assassins have a plan to use dragons for their own benefit in one way or another. Please, can you do a video about the possibility that Gendry is the legitimate son of Robert Baratheon and Cersei Lannister? She said she lost her firstborn son, a black-haired beauty that looked like Robert. There has been tons of people making arguments about this theory. The show does a great job at supporting the claims too by including that Cersei had a black haired child with Robert before her three children with Jaime. The child looked just like Robert but apparently died from a fever. When Gendry is approached by Eddard Stark, Gendry says that his mother died when he was really young and that she had yellow hair and sometimes she would sing to him. Eddard notices right away that Gendry resembles Robert and realizes that John Aaron's words, the seed is strong, was in reference to Robert's ability to have black haired children with women of yellow hair, the same color hair that Cersei has. Which means if Cersei's three blonde children were Robert's, then there would be a high chance of them having darker hair. Other than the idea that Gendry could be the black haired baby of Cersei and Robert, and Cersei being the yellow haired mother who sang to Gendry as a baby, it's all just speculation. It would mean the show would have to spend a good bit of time explaining the storyline and history behind it, so I would say as of now, it's just a theory. One more thought, do you think George R. R. Martin is borrowing from other stories? Prince Oberyn's death scene seemed borrowed from the Princess Bride, and the character Samwise, the potential narrator of Game of Thrones, is very similar to another Samwise from Lord of the Rings. Do you think these are unintentional or homages to the genre? Yes, George R.R. R. Martin is definitely borrowing from other stories. Many fragments of plots that shape his books come from real historical wars and public figures throughout history. The author of The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, was a huge inspiration to Martin, and in many interviews he talks about the brilliance of Tolkien's work. That's going to do it for this short Q&A. Leave your questions for the next video in the comments below. Have a great day, take care, and I will see you tomorrow.